Hi everyone, so welcome back to another academic video. This week I thought we could chat about a role that you might get asked to undertake if you are an academic working at a university, and that is a PhD external examiner. I think on the internet there's quite a lot of videos out there for PhD candidates about to sit their viva or their end exam, but there's less videos for external examiners or people who are being asked to actually examine that PhD candidate's thesis and body of work. Um, I remember the first time I was asked to be a PhD external examiner, and it's a big point in your career. I mean, it's the point where you are effectively being recognised as an expert in your subject field to the point where you can examine a, a student's dissertation for a PhD. So yeah, it's a, it's a big moment. Firstly then, how do you become an external examiner for a PhD student? Well, here in the UK, we have this system where the awarding university has to have an external member on the examination committee who is not from that university. So you have to have somebody from outside your university in order to make up your panel of people who are going to assess your PhD student. So typically here in the UK, we'll have an internal examiner and they come from the university where the student was registered and did their, their study and an external examiner who comes from a different university. Now, quick disclaimer here, other countries, other places will do PhD vivas and assessments in different formats. I'm really kind of talking here about the UK structure. And so what happens is the supervisor of that PhD student is responsible for appointing both the internal examiner and the external examiner. So universities will have various processes, but essentially you have to make a recommendation of who you think would be a suitable external examiner and justify the case for why you as the supervisor are selecting that person. So you can't just pick any old person, you have to pick somebody that is in an academic field that is relevant so that they are in a position to be able to do a kind of a thorough and a credible um, assessment and viva of your PhD student. So how do you become an external examiner? You sort of have to wait <laughs> until you're asked. Um, so basically you need to be known in your research field. If you are publishing papers, if you're going to conferences, you know, if you maybe are chairing sessions, um, putting your research out into the appropriate subject domain for your field, that will mean that your name starts to get known by other colleagues at other universities. If you do some networking at conferences or maybe have a collaboration, you, you again are building your profile in your chosen subject. And it's that profile that will then mean at some point somebody will say, oh, I need to have an examiner for my PhD student and I've seen the work of so-and-so and I'm going to ask them to be my external examiner. then you're going to have to go through um, a formal university process. So they will probably ask you um, your history of examining PhD students. Have you done it before? Have you done internal exams at your university? Is this your first external exam? Um, you might have to give your publication record so that people can see what you yourself are, are publishing in and to make sure that you're in a relevant field. Usually there's a few checks to go through, um, but then, you know, at some point, most likely you're going to get appointed in the formal role as the external examiner. And at that point, then you start then the process of actually examining the dissertation. So the student will complete their thesis. They will have spent years researching their particular topic. Um, they will bind all their work together and then they will submit it. After they've submitted it, the university will then send out a copy of their dissertation to you as the external examiner. Um, sometimes you get a hard copy, so a paper version. Sometimes you get an electronic copy. And typically from the point that you receive the student thesis to the point where you have to have conducted the oral viva exam, you can't typically go over three months. So once you've got that thesis through your, your letterbox, you've got then a three month window in order to read the work, to meet and prepare with the internal examiner, 
and then to hold the actual examination of the Viva for the PhD student. So let's say this, this thesis then has landed on your office desk. What do you do next? So everybody will have a different approach for how they look at their, their PhD student dissertations. Um, I tend to be quite traditional, I guess. I will work with a paper copy. I find it so much easier scribbling notes on a paper version rather than an electronic version. Um, I will read the abstract to get an overall feel for the work. I might have a flick through to the results straight away just to see what the key research findings are that are being presented within that dissertation, that study. And then I will read the entire document. Um, it takes time. You have to, I think, want to go quite slowly through it. I make notes as I'm going through it. Um, I tend to have a bit of a system. So there'll be notes that I put where I want the student to maybe elaborate on something. There'll be points of discussion I want to kind of raise with the student in the exam. And there might be technical queries that I would like to have clarification on or things that have just caught my interest in the study. So I will then go through, read the dissertation and make notes throughout. And then you need to arrange a date for the actual viva. Often here is when the supervisor will take a lead. So the supervisor will introduce the external examiner to the internal examiner and vice versa over email. And then usually you'll work together to try to find a common date where both the external examiner, the external examiner and the PhD student are free to be able to undertake the oral exam. And here in the UK, a viva, so this is what we call these oral exams at the end of our PhDs, a viva will often last somewhere between two to three hours. It can be longer, it can be shorter. And so in the period building up to that date, different universities will do things slightly differently, but you might be asked to send a summary of your thoughts on the, the work to the internal examiner. You might arrange to have a quick conference call between the external and the internal examiner. Um, you might arrange to meet earlier on the day of the exam over a coffee maybe to discuss the research and the work in the exam that's coming up and then you are into the exam itself um, and i know these are nerve-wracking for students i think when you're doing your first one as the external examiner you know you might feel a little bit nervous too because you want to make sure that you do a good job um, but essentially then your role as the external examiner is really looking for two things Firstly, is the work novel and of publishable research quality? So has the student within their dissertation put forward something into the research community that is novel and stepping forward the thinking or the understanding within their chosen subject? And then your second thing you're kind of looking at is, did the student sitting in front of you actually do the work? You know, are they able to speak fluently about their studies? Um, can they maybe, when you challenge them on particular points, do they have um, open responses? Are they um, engaging with their study? Can they put forward their particular points of view based on research and evidence? That's kind of how you get the understanding that that particular individual did that particular study. So this sounds like <laughs> quite a lot of work. And you might be thinking, well, what is the benefit for me as a lecturer or as a, as a professor in undertaking PhD examinations and being the external examiner? And I guess firstly, of course, we do it because we are contributing towards the academic society of our subject. You know, it is fabulous that people want to research and push forward our knowledge and then by being the examiner of that work, you're able to give feedback and ultimately recognition to an individual to allow them to achieve their PhD qualification and become a doctor. So there is kind of a, a subject necessity or kind of giving back to the subject that I think is, is really important to take on this role as external examiner. It's also really useful as a lecturer in a similar or related field because you can see the research work going on at another university. Also, of course, if you are a lecturer, you might well have PhD students yourself. And at some point, you might need to find examiners for your PhD students. And so if you're the person who always says no and never does any external examinations for other people, 
then you might find it challenging to get another academic to be the external examiner for your PhD student. And of course, the last thing I guess to mention is money. Um, as an external examiner, it is recognised that it is um, a considerable amount of work and time added to your workload. Um, and so many universities will recognise the external examiner as a paid role. And so you will actually be financially um, paid for your time in order to undertake that thorough assessment of the student's work. Let me know, have you been an external PhD examiner? Have you been an internal PhD examiner? Are you nervous about being asked to be a PhD examiner for the first time? Let me know in the comments. As always, like, subscribe, take care, look after yourself, have an awesome week. We are mid-semester, so I've got class prep to do, marking to do. There is a lot of stuff happening simultaneously, but have a fun week, stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.